I was giving classes <coughs> in Brooklyn, <coughs> New York, and I had um, a very nice group of people. They came to see Guru quite often. Um, I had a surprise for Guru, and that was that uh, we are, uh, the whole group was going to sing some simple songs for him. And uh, <clears throat> I, told, I told Guru, this is one of the, the secrets meditation at Aspiration Ground. And I approached Guru and I told him, Guru, I have a surprise for you. And he says, show me. Okay, okay I'll be right back. So I called them down. They stand in front of Guru, fold their hands. <clears throat> and they start, start, we started singing. And when I look at Guru, because I wasn't too far away from him, when I look at Guru, I see tears coming down uh, his eyes. And uh, I was completely surprised to see, see him, how moved he was. And uh, when, they, when we finished singing, um, he was clapping like, it was like the greatest spectacle. <clears throat> and everybody was clapping very hard. And before we go back to our seats, Guru says, only, only a Puerto Rican can do this. <laughs> only a Puerto Rican can have a group of seekers aspiring to become my disciples and can sing five songs for me. I was moved to tears. My heart was crying. My eyes were crying. My entire being was crying with joy and gratitude. <clears throat> so, um, how the name came about. I, uh, before this happened, um, I uh, <clears throat> asked Guru, I told Guru, Guru, <clears throat> there's so many good seekers that are coming into my classes. And, uh, and uh, I don't want to discard them if they don't want to become disciples right now. Because they like to meditate uh, on you. They, they like what we're doing. They're, they're very happy. And it would be very sad to forget about them because they don't want to be disciples. At least not yet. And he asked me, what do you want to do? But I want to keep them coming uh, for as long as they want to, no time limit. Uh, even if they have seen you three or four times, I still don't want to discard them because they are very good people. And uh, he says, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, keep them, keep them. And uh, <clears throat> I told him, I have a name for the group. And he says, what is the name? And I said, Trishimoy Peace Beacons. Beacons are rays of light. And Guru, Guru said, no. <clears throat> he went into Samadhi, came back down. I started to write and draw birds and whatnot. He gives me the paper and he says, Trishimoy Peace Service. So this is how the Trisha Moipi service started, how it took life. I'm saying this because many people ask, ask me about it <clears throat> and others have some reservations about it to an event. And we started, we started very strong. I moved out of Brooklyn back here to Jamaica, in this very house. <clears throat> and we were meeting here, we were meeting in parks, uh, Central Park, in Flushing Meadow Park, and um, in uh, this big park in Brooklyn, uh, which I can't really remember the name, a beautiful park. And um, so then we did sing, this thing with the singing, 
and um, about about 15 of them came forward to become disciples. And uh, the beautiful thing is that we had people of all walks of life and it was a rainbow of colors. So everyone, I felt like everyone was represented. Um, I, uh, I was giving them money so they could come to see Guru. Uh, when I, I told Guru this, and I said, bah, bah, bah. I did the same thing. <clears throat> I did the same thing with the, <clears throat> with the first seekers that were coming. I would give them the subway fare so that they can come and go. And I said, Guru, that's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, it was just so moved by it. Because uh, I didn't know that Guru was giving them money. I had no idea. Um, so uh, eventually, uh, for whatever reasons, the, the group got smaller and eventually fizzled out. And I tried to start it here again. And um, uh, it was not possible at that time. I went to India in 2009 um, because a group of seekers from Rishikesh and Varanasi kept on asking me to come. And even when I told them, but here, there in India, you have all kinds of yogis and sadhus and babas and spiritual teachers. And, and right, right there, you know, the meditation classes. And one of the boys tell me, no, 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 we want to learn from you. We want to know more about Sri Chinmoy. Um, we, I've seen, I've gone to the websites, I've seen so many interesting things. So we, we want to um, learn from you. And uh, I was so touched and I was so moved. And there was, this, this boy was from, from Rishikesh, and another boy from Rishikesh. Um, he was in touch with me every day. And he wanted me to talk to him about spirituality. He says, you always inspire me so much. You always uh, m make me want to uh, do exactly what my dream has been, which is to be sincerely spiritual and devoted to God. And I believe that Sri Chinmoy is the way, and you are the right instrument. This kind of thing really, really moved me. And then there's this boy from Varanasi. I, I met him the first time I went to India. And again, I forgive me, that was in 2009. And, um, and uh, I stay in this simple, two-star hotel, yeah. 